Massachusetts schools are officially closed for the current school year. What began as a span of two to three weeks of remote learning is now the new normal. Municipal producer Yu Xiaowen talked to some teachers from Pollard Middle School to find out their perspectives on virtual teaching. Schools across the country have never had to improvise like this. Building closure interrupted teachers' lesson plans and necessitated the creation of a new curriculum in a couple of weeks. Teachers have picked up technologies to help them replicate the function of schools and to reach their students while isolated at home. We're all kind of learning as this is happening. You know, it's not like we're all learning and coming up with a plan and then we'll roll it out next week. It's like we're learning at the same time that we're doing it. All of us teachers are just kind of trying everything in, in this weird flurry of, of throwing everything at the wall and just kind of to see what sticks. And so we're, we've been asking the students to be kind of patient with us because we're, we're making it up as we go. And a lot of us are changing our curriculum and, and changing what we would normally do and changing how we would do it. And the kids have actually been really good at, at being very fluid and, and just kind of adapting with us. With the new schedule, the teachers send out instructions and assignments on Monday in format of pre-recorded videos and guidance sheets, and collect students' work throughout the week. During the week, each teacher also has the opportunity to offer synchronous classes via Zoom or Google Chat to answer questions. They need to find the best way that works for themselves and their students. The week before, we'll, we'll come up with a schedule of when we're going to be available for office hours and what those office hours are going to look like. It could be uh, like a, a Zoom meeting kind of setup where students can, can come in and ask questions. It could be a synchronous learning situation where maybe there's a 15 or 20 minute discussion where we're actually talking about one of the assignments that the students did earlier on in the week. That's still something that's a work in progress for us as teachers, is figuring out the optimal way to use that time to interact with kids, whether it's with some kind of video conference like Zoom or Google Meets or um, other online ways of writing back and forth with them. We've been successful with just having like a shared document that's been posted on Google Classroom that's just a running Q&A document where a student types a question and then the teacher will respond and that every student can just write down or type their questions kind of in real time. Technology is the key to remote learning, but can also be overwhelming. It's a little overwhelming when you have about 70, 60 or 70 students all show up in a Zoom at once and trying to manage all of that and keeping your eye on the, the waiting room and keeping your eye on students raising their hands and then backgrounds and, and what students are doing. And now that they're figuring out how it works and figuring out what those office hours are like, um, it's evened out a little bit to closer to and your average class sizes. There's a little bit of disconnect between how certain applications look on a, a laptop versus how they would look on a Chromebook versus how they would look on a desktop computer versus how they would look on an iPad. Uh, like we've recently learned a lot of the extensions, the Chrome extensions that are available in, in Google Meet that make it a little bit more user friendly currently aren't available on the iPad. When I asked about the challenges of remote teaching, the word disconnection brought up multiple times. Those disconnections are not just between teachers and students, students and their peers, but they also affect community building. It's a very disconnected feeling for someone whose profession is constantly being surrounded by people, by, by children all the time, and and always being there to help. The biggest challenge that we have right now is just that connection piece and developing you know, that rapport with our students and getting to know them and having those connections and relationships. You know, That part is really, really challenging, obviously through a screen. I'm able to give the students poems and say, read these poems, answer these questions, now write your own poem. But it's definitely different than the way that I would structure walking through a poem with them, the starting point, and even just getting them over the hurdle of we're doing poetry now, which some people have a really negative reaction to and think it's boring. You know, that requires some cheerleading that's easier to do in person than it is 
So when I'm teaching in a classroom, I can walk around, I can see how students are doing, you know, if they're getting it, if they're not, if I need to, you know, clarify something or re-explain something. But this format, I kind of just have to push out the lesson, make it as clear as possible, and then just be available throughout the week if any questions come up. For math, there's a lot of like content builds on each other. So if we're not, you know, if they're not really mastering the skill before, it's going to be hard to continue to learn the next skills. We're trying to find ways to do more like formative assessment and really check that they're understanding it. But that's definitely harder um, when they're not face to face. You know, when I walk around my classroom and they're doing classwork, I can very quickly look and see, you know, oh, you missed this problem. Let, let's go back and relook at it. Or during notes, I can kind of clarify. I can answer questions and I can basically spend more one-on-one -on -one time with kids. A lot of my curriculum is project-based learning. And I will, I'll give students like a longer project, a multi-step project that will usually take two or three days or four days to complete. And we kind of do one piece at a time. And uh, it's a lot of times it's collaborative. It's working with partners or it's working with small groups. With this format, um, it's just, it, everything's a little bit different. It's they're not able to to necessarily work in these small collaborative groups. Some have let me know that they are. They can like talk to each other via Zoom or Google Meet or Skype or something along those lines. But I don't get to be witness to that. And I don't get to we don't get to have those like rich in-depth class discussions. In class, I'm able to show them a lot of different specific de demonstrations and, and things that get them excited. And um, it's kind of hard to imitate that from home. So that's, that's definitely being lost. And I think just in general, I think um, what's being lost is our role in the classroom, which I think goes a little uh, un unregarded at times by people who don't know better, that like students don't just learn on their own in the classroom. Like students are very driven by the motivation with their relationship with their teacher and, and how the teacher's delivering it and their excitement and how they're delivering it and their kind of like on the side motivation and redirection and, and, and kind of uh, the, the very subtle ways we interact with our kids on a daily basis in person, that's what drives the learning. And we've also had to cut back on some of the material we're teaching just simply because um, we want to do quality over quantity. So we want to make sure that what we're teaching them, they're really able to understand, but that will take more time for them to learn than it would if we were just teaching them in the classroom face to face. Having those individual classes, every group of students is its own community, has its own flavor. And that's something that you, as a teacher, really build towards over the course of the year. And now at the end of the year is when we really, you know, see all of that work and all of that community building come to fruition and, you know, have a great group with inside jokes and just so comfort with each other. At the school committee open house event on April 18th, Superintendent Dan Goodekunst said we are not replicating Needham Public School's classroom in your dining room. Forcing students to sit in front of screen for several hours per day is not considered an equitable and efficient way of teaching. The teachers I interviewed agreed with the sentiment. That idea requires so much family engagement and so much motivation for students, or kind of internal motivation. And I think it Personally, I think it discounts the role of a teacher in a classroom of of we are not just there. We're not just robots speaking words that students take into their head that we are. We are there playing so many different roles in these in our students lives and so many different kind of like just, just we're framing our curriculum. It's almost like we're salespeople for the learning we want our kids to do. And it doesn't happen in the same way, but we're helping them find a balance in their day and their life right now. And I would think that it would be really hard to find balance and to have students take any more away than we are trying to have them take away. Especially, you know, when you go into to younger students in middle school and even lower in elementary school, I just don't think students would have the stamina for that. I think it's it's unrealistic for for people to expect them to be able to handle something like that. And I think the kind of the directive that we're getting now in these these shorter bursts and, you know, two to two and a half hours of work per week is a little bit better because also, let's face it, we're in the middle of a pandemic and to expect the students focus to be 100 percent on school when all of this is going on around them, I think, is a little unrealistic. They, um, you know, they have family members who 
might be ill, they have family members who might be first responders or who are essential employees who are still going to work every day. And there's a lot of things on their mind. It's it's not like this is like a power outage or like a bad winter storm. This is, it's something that's going to shape their futures for the rest of their lives. And I think while we want to try and establish some kind of routine and keep them in some kind of system of normalcy to completely ignore what's going on and tell them not to worry about it and focus only on school like nothing is happening, I think is also naive. Not everyone necessarily has access to the internet at all times or being able to sit on a Zoom um, call and listen. And so, yeah, maybe in a perfect world that that would be great, but it's not realistic and it's not equitable. And if it's not, if we can't access all kids that way, then it's not in the best interest of all the kids and it's not, we're not going to do it. And I wouldn't be able to be okay with, you know, kids falling behind because they don't have access to the material. I couldn't live with that. The new curriculum does not require teachers to grade their students' work. Many teachers' top concern is not academics. Keeping students motivated and helping them feel less isolated has become priority. We're doing the best we can to push forward curriculum within reason, but again, like the emotional and social or social emotional well-being of the kids is kind of above all priorities. So I think at this time people are focusing more on their families and whatnot. Um, and because this isn't specific to their child, like everyone's missing out on the same material and we're going to come up with a way to best kind of fill in those gaps next year. What we value and prioritize with our schedule was teachers connecting with students. So while we are encouraging them to do their work and giving them feedback on their work and giving them new material to learn, what we check in about with each other as teachers all the time is who have we heard from, who are we concerned about, um, and I think that's the most important thing because we're we're going through this with our students and we want to support them and let them know that we're there for them and that's our top priority as their teachers. One of my roles in the class is I'm kind of goofy. I make jokes. I make kids laugh. So I'm so trying to do that. I've sent them videos of me playing Disney songs on the guitar. Just stupid things that I'm just doing on my own that. I would be sharing with them if I was in person these dumb things that I'm still trying to still trying to make it about the the like the the person the person relationship that we have and hopefully that guides the the teacher to student relationship that you know it's going to make them learn from me maybe is there a way that we can do book clubs and students will read the same book together in a group and that'll give them a chance to interact with each other and interact with me Teachers are also using the advisory class, which is offered three times a week to help students feel more connected. Just kind of ask about what's going on, any, you know, anything that's on their mind, any worries that they have, any questions that they have, if they want to talk about um, any, like I've heard a couple of things about like relatives that, that work in hospitals and just, you know, concerns that they have. It's really just kind of a a safe place for students to voice just what they're what they're thinking what they're worried about they're trying to find the positives every time we do high lows of like tell me something good about your day they'll say they've gone for a bike ride or they got to you know cook something with a sibling and they don't they're they always say they don't have so many lows which is great so that they're finding ways to kind of keep busy and stay positive during this which i think is awesome is there anything that you've done differently um, than you used to do it before in the last couple of weeks. And it was interesting to hear their answers. Um, one student said that she celebrated her friend's birthday by driving past the friend's house with balloons and streamers on her car. And another student said that they painted rocks and left them on their neighbor's walkways as a little surprise overnight and that the neighborhood really liked that little surprise. Many teachers look at the situation as an opportunity to help students with self-learning skills. We give them the answer keys and stuff too so they can check their answers and the goal is that they're also learning using their student skills because again the three things you know that we're looking at right now obviously their well-being being number one and making sure they're safe and making sure that we're connecting with them and they're connecting with each other. Two is you know the content of teaching the math and three is their you know those um, student skills of like you know looking at an answer key and checking it and really being thorough with your work and the same skills that we've been practicing with them all year. In, in terms of that kind of organizational skills, practicing that now when there's, when there's not a lot at stake, because I mean, as of right now, you know, um, the students know that the, the work 
is evaluated by teachers and it's it's graded on kind of like a credit no credit kind of basis and I think now's a really good time for students to start practicing those organizational skills of looking at all of these different assignments and planning out throughout the week what am I going to do Monday what am I going to do Tuesday how am I going to organize my time and with help from their parents I think once school does return to normal and when these when these students go into high school or into college where those skills are going to be really necessary, hopefully they might find that they're a little bit better off because they've had a little bit of practice with that. Even though teachers and students are still adjusting to the new normal, there have also been some pleasant surprises. This week, a science teacher was excited to share some student work with us. His email said, it is clear they are choosing to make the most out of this.